So welcome back friends to a very chilly day on the homestead. Yes, I am standing before you in the middle of an open field with a hard hat on. <laughs> Someone pointed that out in the comments of how stupid that was. And it didn't dawn on me. I mean, this is like, it's just my habit. You know, when I go, when I grab the chainsaw and I'm doing the chainsaw work, this is part of the, part of the costume. Speaking of which, I kind of look like Mon Monter. All I need is a, is a, is a sword. Can you see that? Looks nice. I, I kind of sometimes when I see those old, uh, those the, the the movie guys with the leather armor and all of that, I'm a little bit envious. Like, how come we can't, don't get to wear armor anymore? That would be so cool if we could do that and not look like look like a complete idiot. Anyway, so <clears throat> we're on the topic of uh, chain, my favorite chainsaw accessories. What's it been interesting is that uh, as I've been decluttering my life and getting rid of things that were just not being used, I had acquired a whole bunch of chainsaw stuff that was kind of gimmicky and I got rid of all of it. So what I was thinking about today's video is what about the things that remained? That's what I want to share with you. Those are the things that I have actually uh, uh, considered uh, important enough uh, to the kit to, to, to remain in the kit, right? So I want to share with you uh, a couple of my favorite ones uh, and why I like them so well and why I think it's worth having in your, uh, in your accessory, chainsaw accessory kit. Joseph Strauss. Before we get started, would you like some hard hat facts? And no, I didn't look this up on the internet right before this video to make myself look smarter than you. Of course, I knew all these things. The first hard hats were made of leather. I didn't know that. And in 1933, when they were building the Golden Gate Bridge, is the first documented project where a supervisor required hard hats for the job. And listen to this, Germany. He was a German. Joe Strauss was his name. Joe Strauss. You see? A good German trying to help people rather than trying to help. Joe Strauss also required safety nets on this Golden Gate Bridge build that saved 19 guys. How about that? Very interesting, huh? So in the 30s, I think 33, they introduced the aluminum hard hat uh, from the leather, and then ultimately they go into the, the polymer, the plastic ones now. Now, my question, what I was kind of wondering and looking, why are these aluminum hard hats traditionally worn by foresters uh, and loggers. Why is that? Well, I went online and I looked around and I and I actually called some people that might have a, have a couple questions. What I heard from the loggers was this, is that they like the aluminum hard hats because they like the sound of the rain falling on them. <laughs> there was that. There was also some guys said that they're easier to tell if uh, an aluminum hard hat is damaged. Apparently, when you test a plastic hard hat, they do some sort of a squeeze test, so it could be brittle. Also, the aluminum hats are not uh, damaged so much by UV. They don't get broke down and, and get brittle and no longer offer the protection that they, should, they do uh, before that. Um, and I think that also that wide brim shape, which comes either way, is nice if you're working in trees where the water's dripping on you and then it kind of shields it away from from your head and doesn't run down the back of your neck so much. So those are the reasons. Now you can still wear aluminum hard hats in some areas as long as there's no uh, probability of that there could be an electrical conduction or electri electri working in an electrical area where you could get you know ground out your helmet uh, on that. So that's the, that's the only thing. So I don't know. Uh, apart from that, they're just kind of cool and traditional and that's why I like to wear them and I will continue to wear mine standing out here in the middle of the field. It's just kind of what I do. Keeps the sun off my head. How about that? Is that good enough reason for you? I don't think I mentioned what I was working on today. I've got these old, old pine here. These pine are so ornery that they won't even burn. Twice I've tried to put them in a burn pile and get them going and they just laugh at the fire and char a little bit. So I'm going to cut them up and burn them in the, in the stove. I know they'll burn in there. That makes a nice little workbench there. We've even got a holder for our chainsaw. Whew, man, it is freezing out here. I'll tell you what, it's gonna be a one accessory video. 
uh, and we'll be lucky to get through that. Through that, it's not going to be two. Uh, but today's accessory, uh, one that I've kept with me and, and I've really enjoyed, is uh, a stump vise. It's I have seen on, especially on wildland fires, guys uh, just struggling to get a purchase on the saw. Usually, you can kind of come at it, sneak up on it from one side, uh, and the filing's pretty normal. But there's always your offhand, which it's not, uh, and you end up getting a poor filing job. So there's actually I've ran into a bunch of sawyers that carry a lightweight version of this one uh, in their wildland packs. And that's kind of an interesting. I have this big Herkin heavy duty one uh, that uh, is fine if you're working out of your truck. But what you do is you, you can pound this thing in with the spikes just into a stump. Now, before you go about pounding with your with your fancy axes, you know, and I'm gonna this is gonna be a do as I say, not as I do all the time because I I I mean I can't lie about it. I've pounded this in many times uh, with the pole of my Grand Force Brook small forest axe, which is you don't want to do, you know, because they're they're hardened steel, especially when it's this cold. I'll tell you what, another little interesting story. Can I pan that up there for you? The old timers uh, that would go into the forest uh, and it would fall timber when they were working in really cold environments and they had axes that were really their pride and joy. You know, they don't they didn't look at their falling axes the way that we do now and you throw them into the back of your truck or you hang them up on a wall and let them rust. You know, they, they that was their bread and butter. It was the tool of their trade. And so they had to have hand forged axes, high quality, uh, and, and they would actually carry them in their armpits under their cruiser jackets or wool jackets uh, to keep that steel warm so that if they were to hit something hard like a, a piece of pitch, a pocket or, or, or even a rock or something that it wouldn't damage that precious tip. Uh, so kind of so even now you know when it's cold like this let me put you back down we run the risk of having this steel uh fracture or, or break so uh, uh you, if you if you that's what's so nice about carrying these little wedges this is another little accessory that i that i made you know i mean you can you could use that too right just to take up some of the shock you know whatever grab a stick uh, but just something where you're not going metal to metal on there um, am I guilty of it? Yeah, I am, but uh, I'll try to do this in the in the future right there So let's show how that aids in the sharpening of a saw Boy, my blood must be thin what granddad always said when I'd complain about When I was just a kid complain about how cold it was elk hunting. Oh, man, it was freezing wake up at 3 30 in the morning and in a wall tent and it's below zero and you got to start the wood stove and He'd say, oh, your blood's just thin. You just need to get your blood a little thicker. And pancakes were his solution for getting your blood thicker. And uh, he ate a lot of pancakes. We all ate a lot of pancakes there. All right, let's dig into the, my accessory bag basically consists of this. This is the Recycled Firefighter bag. I don't know if he's still making them. Recycledfirefighter.com, he sent these to me years ago and I still love these bags. He makes them out of old fire hose with really heavy duty zippers and industrial stitching. And they are tough. So in the secret bag of accessories here, uh, we've got our chainsaw file. Just a regular st standard garden variety. I like the Swiss files best if I can find them. And I like these plastic handles uh, that fit the taper because you're gonna have two files in your kit, right? Not just this. Some guys think that this is it when it comes to filing. And it is for the most part, but you need to be having two files. You need to be having a file gauge as well to knock those depth gauges down. Right? We've all talked about this. Maybe we'll do a, a quick re recap here. Uh, but these are these are your three tools. So what this stump vise gives you the ability to do. Now, just as a tip, when you start filing, I'm running uh, full skip chains. Uh, they, I like them because you don't have so many teeth to file. You might want to consider when you get new chains to get half skip and full skip. Also, for you, the common guy, for myself, your round file is the best way to go. There's chisel grind chains, there's square, I don't know much about it, there's square, and then there's the round file. The round file is the least efficient of all the method, of all the different ways to grind. They're not gonna cut as fast or as hard. However, they are the most durable, and that's why we use them on wildland firefighting. If and when you get into the dirt and you're in a terrible environment in wildland firefighting, there's ash and there's rocks and there's all sorts of stuff and you're constantly filing chains, it will take the most abuse and continue to function. 
or if you take a really precision machine ground chis chisel chain, if you knock that sharp edge off, it's got to be, it's sticky sharp. It's like a cat claw sharp. Once that's gone, then the, it doesn't do very well at all, and you can't really touch it up unless you're super skilled in the field. The round file is something we can all do. So when you're buying your chains, you want to specify either half or full skip chains. means that they have less cutting teeth on them. Higher probability of kickback, but they spin faster, and they're super aggressive, and they're less to file. So half or full skip, uh, and you want a round file chain. Because if you, you can file the square or the chisel out of the round, but you lose a lot of your chain. So just get the round file chains. So let's take a close up look here. When you start filing your chain, uh, look for your master link, uh, the repair or repair link. You'll do your new chain. Sometimes it'll be painted a different color and you start there and move your, once you put your bar in the vise, move your chain forward by pushing with the file like this. So you'll, you'll see that yellow one right there. Okay, that's the way we're gonna file. We're gonna start here. Now we're gonna just, uh, we're filing. Now we have a really stable uh, base, a vise that has a very, makes it very easy to file. I can position my body. I don't have to try to, I can get in a comfortable position. I don't have to try to balance it on my legs or anything. And it's a whole, you get a whole, whole lot better filing job than uh, if you try to just, if you don't have any way to hold it. And then on our other way around, you know, of course we can come over to the other side uh, comfortably and file both ways. So as I was saying, just very, very quickly here, we want to make sure that we have also have one of these little flat uh, mill bastard file. Uh, no, they're not mill bastard. I'll have to put a, a link. I'll put a link what they are if I can find them. Just these little flat files and you use the same handle that you did for your round file. That way you're only carrying one thing into the wilderness instead of multiples. And then this little guy, this is a file gauge and it's made of hardened steel. And what you do is you bridge two of the teeth and then this right here gives you a file. This is called a filing plate. You see how the file fits in there perfectly. It's so hard that the file won't cut this. So it maintain, it lasts a long time. But what sticks up remaining above this of the depth gauge right there needs to be knocked down. And this is how you can quickly go along and knock those rakers down. Because these teeth, every time you file them, they get lower and lower and lower. And if you don't take down these, these depth gauges here, then they won't, the, the saw won't cut very good. So you have to have these pieces uh, together. But the stump vise, in whatever variation you find, whether the lightweight one or the a bench, more of a bench style or car type, uh, this one here is the best one I've ever found. And it's one of my, my favorite chainsaw accessories. Somewhere in this video, I hid an Amazon gift card, good for $10 to $20 as a thank you for Mrs. W and I. Last time I checked, no one had claimed it, so happy hunting.